we created this book here called Creating and Sustaining Your School Garden, or Gardens for Learning, Creating and Sustaining Your School Garden. We got 10,000 of them printed. We sent them out free to any teacher in California, and it's also available as a download. If you read your homework that was sent out to you um, from Michelle, the um, first chapter of the book is what was sent to you. It's kind of a, a why school gardening. Um, once again, this was funded through our initial seed grants that we had. And um, something we learned about this project, too, once again, having a lead. We had Charlene Garcia of the California Department of Food and Agriculture. She was the lead, and she volunteered to do this within our organization, probably also because our organization was funding it. She had more interest to do it. But she made it happen that, that eight different people could get together and collaboratively write a book. And then we also contracted out a writer and a designer. And that was a key component, too, rather than just trying to have someone do that in kind. And we contracted the National Gardening Association, which obviously had experience in doing this type of work. Um, and then just recently, one of our other partners has put together a, a, a standard supplement which links some of the lessons that are listed, or the lesson ideas, they're not full lessons, but they're lesson ideas that are listed in here um, and tied them to the California state standards for first through sixth grade. So this is free, available online, or free sent to teachers. So we've, we've got some really good resources that we're using to support the school garden movement. Um, we're going to jump into our committees, um, our research committees, chaired by Jerry Omart, um, who you just see, uh, saw present um, from UC Davis Children's Garden Program and UC Sarah. Um, and kind of the goal of the research is, is to consolidate garden-based learning research and making it accessible to various groups of people for various reasons. Um, so now we have a searchable database of garden-based learning articles. Um, we're drafting garden-based learning research briefs. So kind of um, a summary of why school gardens are good for nutrition education, why school gardens are good for academic achievement, and putting it in layman's terms so that PTA and parents and folks can go to their administrators, or you can pull content from that and put it in your grant, grant, um, grant um, proposals. So those are, those are on their way. we still got a couple to finish up. Um, Jerry's also working on a program where they're documenting best practices in garden-based learning in middle schools. They went to 10 stellar school gardens that, that are serving middle school students, and they asked them everything and took photos and got sample lessons, and that's all going to be available on the website um, in couple of weeks or months. We'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, and um, just let me let you know that that was funded through a, a specialty crops grant through the California Department of Food and Agriculture in the, um, in the ag ed sector um, of that grant. Um, we want to evaluate the California Instructional School Garden Program. Um, that's that $11 million that was given to um, California schools, but it wasn't given with money to administer the grant nor evaluate the grant. So I don't know we're going to have a huge evaluation, but whatever is done towards evaluation, we would like to highlight that on our website. Um, and then we have another project in the works or in, in our brain spinning is we want to start um, surveying successful school gardens, ones that have been out there for five, ten years, and find out what makes them tick. Because we know there's not one answer to sustaining a school garden but we want to start collecting these ideas and sharing them. Um, our marketing committee is chaired by Hope Wilson of the Department of Public Health, and she's highly assisted by Brianna at Western Growers. Um, special events are happening, like School Garden Week, which I mentioned. Um, promotional materials, flyers, that you, know, you can download a flyer off of our website and then bring it to your own school gardening events. Um, and we're trying to have a larger president presence at um, conferences, and so we ask our partners to bring CSGN literature to the California Teachers Association or the Ecological Farming Association's conferences that are uh, reaching a larger audience than we can reach just by meeting every three months. Um, so once again, I mentioned Western Growers is a, is a key component to this because they have the office space, they house the book, they ship the book that we're sending out to teachers, and that's all in kind. So. Once again, it's something to, to really think about, a, a strong partner. Um, our website's increasing in the amount of folks that are visiting it because we're adding content and letting folks know about it. Um, and I think I mentioned everything else. We've been going to conferences, and, and we're hosting the School Garden Week in the last week of October. So Education Committee, that's the committee I work with. Um, some things I'm interested in doing is getting more web content on, on the CSGN site. And we want to support um, professional development efforts for um, garden educators and folks that promote school gardening. 
And we've been quite successful at that. We got a small grant through the Association of Nursery and Garden Centers, and UC Davis and Life Lab worked together and created the um, Creating and Sustaining Your School Garden Workshop Model, which is based off this book. So this book is the textbook for that model. And online now, we have trainer outlines and participant handouts of basic gardening skills all in the lens of working in a school garden. And so now that training model is available for anyone to take the parts and do what they want with them. They could use all of them or some of them. Um, and then they also, um, we've also trained people in the train the trainer workshop. We trained, um, we had five different train the trainer workshops. And in total, we've trained 250 people since um, 2007. And CSGN had a little bit of money and we actually paid the people that came to our train the trainer workshops and had them replicate the Creating and Sustaining Your School Garden model, and we ended up training 679 people representing 295 schools, and that was just last school year. So this model is really successful, and we're looking for more ways to fund it and keep it going, and to diversify who we're training. So we've trained 90 master gardeners as well in 21 counties, and this momentum has led to us being able to host a um, garden-based learning track at the Regional Master Gardener Conference. So we're gonna do seven workshops just on garden-based learning for youth, next weekend um, at, the, at the statewide Master Gardener Conference. Um, our Creating and Sustaining Your uh, School Garden workshop model it has videos that accompany them. And those are funded by the Integrated Waste Management Board. Um, they're not online yet, but they're finished and they're waiting to get posted. We've um, started collecting garden-based learning videos and putting them all in one place. You go to Google, or you go to YouTube and search school gardens, you get like 6,527 videos that don't have anything to do with school gardening. So what we're doing is finding good videos and placing them in one place. And there's some also videos that Life Lab was funded to um, create on effective outdoor management. And we, and we looked at um, garden coordinators in our area and, and actually videoed them in their gardens teaching garden-based nutrition and garden-based learning topics. Um, I mentioned the Gardens for Learning book. Um, one thing we need to work on is um, the curriculum section. We do have a large curriculum section on the CSGN website and it's just a collection of lessons, PDF downloads, and anyone has any ideas or leads of some good garden-based learning curriculum that's online, please talk to me because we're, we're looking for that. We want to add online forums and I mentioned the um, promoter's toolbox, which is, um, this is kind of a draft of it, is for, for garden promoters to find everything they need in one place. So some challenges, our state is large. And um, it's hard to travel and uh, afford travel for many organizations. So we have to figure out ways um, to get all our stakeholders of partner organizations and, and, and communicating. And one way is through regional chapters. Um, funding, I don't have to talk much about that, right? We're all familiar with the challenges of funding. But um, having core funding, have a staff, have Brianna be full time to be CSGN rather than part of her job. Uh, at Western Growers would be huge. Um, we need more educator participation and that's based on marketing and we need more organizations that are involved in school gardening to start using CSGN and promoting CSGN as a resource. Um, and just in summary, school gardens are a big challenge to sustain. It's not a small task creating a garden, just like it's not a small task getting a food service director to buy local or to serve more fruits and vegetables. So we need to think of mechanisms to share um, how successful school gardens are sustained. So in closing, just a couple points, CSGN plays a great role in the development of funding and delivering of garden-based learning programs in California. Um, one great thing we do is it's a, it's a vehicle for um, partners to communicate, to leverage funding and collaborate on projects. And that's something we've done a lot uh, through our meetings. And our website strives to be the hub for the garden-based learning movement in the state. And we hope to see that continue. So thanks a lot. And we'll do questions after the other presentations. <laughs>